Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Foxia Micro Lollipop 5.8 GHz omnidirectional antenna. In this video I'm going to show the available options, crack one open in order to see what's going on inside, test it using the ROC SWR meter, and finally head outdoors and compare it side by side with the Foxia Lollipop 3 antenna. First of all, the Micro Lollipop is available in different colors, and you can choose between SMA, LPSMA, Angle M6, Straight M6, or UFL connectors. In addition, at the moment of shooting this video, only right-hand circular polarized antennas are available, but I was told by Foxeer that LHCP antennas should be available soon. The weight of the Micro Lollipop antenna is affected by its connector. The lightest antenna is the one which is equipped with a UFL connector, and it weighs 1.7 grams. The MM6 version weighs 3 grams, and the heaviest antennas are the one with an SMA or an LPSMA connector, which weighs 5.3 grams, which is 2.2 grams lighter than the Lollipop 3 antenna with the same connector. In addition, the height of the case of the Micro Lollipop is 13 mm, so it's a little bit longer than the Lollipop 3, and its diameter is 10.7 mm, which is of course less than the diameter of the case of the Lollipop 3. Now let's test the Micro Lollipop antenna using the LRC SWR meter, which even though is not a professional tool, can give us an indication about its recommended operation frequency. Now let's start the test, and according to these results, the antenna is going to perform better when the frequency is going to be between 5800 to 5645, which is the lowest frequency that this device can measure. I repeated the test also for the Lollipop 3, and according to the SWR meter, the antenna better performs when the frequency is around 5700. Now in the name of science, let's decase one of these antennas. And even though I broke it a little bit in the process of cracking up the case, here you can see what it looks like, so it's definitely different than the internal parts of the Lollipop 3. This broken antenna is of course no longer usable, and testing it again with the SWR meter tool confirms it. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and compare the Lollipop 3 with the Micro Lollipop using the same quadcopter and while trying to fly at the same route. After examining the results, I can tell you that as expected the Lollipop 3 did better, but the Micro Lollipop did pretty well, so if you're in the market for a light, small and robust antenna, you should definitely check it out. In addition, I'm also curious to see how these antennas are going to perform with the DJI Air Unit, so stay tuned for this test. I'm going to wrap up this video with the flight footage. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.